From your point of view and from the point of view of the people that you work with, is there concern that the president may go soft here at the end because he's so eager to get a deal? I don't think that's where we are in these negotiations at all. Uh, Bob Lighthizer is a very strong negotiator. Leo Ha on the Chinese side, also a very strong negotiator. All we are hearing is that they have been working on detailed, substantive provisions. There will definitely be some purchases, and that goes along with it, and that's going to be helpful to particularly agriculture, where there's been a lot of loss of sales over the last year. But I don't think that's going to be the substance of the agreement. I think they're making progress on the intellectual property rights issues, and that's going to be important for U.S. business. So you referred to the United States Trade Representative, Ambassador Lighthizer. We had testimony from him this week up on Capitol Hill, and he made it sound like, boy, they've got a long way to go. There's a lot of ifs involved. At the same time, we heard from Kevin Hassett from the White House yesterday, and he said it's imminent almost. Listen to what he had to say. I think that, you know, right, we've made enormous amount of progress. Ambassador Lighthizer just testified about that progress. And I think that, you know, some of the most interesting things he talked about were like the sketch of an agreement on enforcement, which was one of the trickiest nuts to crack. So from what you know, Aaron, how close are we? I, I think that both of those statements actually are not mutually exclusive. There is still clearly some substance that has to be worked out. How this agreement is enforced is going to be the key about whether it's successful in the end. And those are areas where we know from our conversations with Chinese officials, they don't want the U.S. unilaterally deciding whether China's in compliance or not. From the U.S. perspective, however, you can't just trust what China is telling you as being true. So balancing those things out means that those are probably going to be the last items to be determined. But they've come a long way. So I think they are very close, even if there are some very tough details still to be worked out. There's a major development in China starting on the 4th, next Monday, which is the National People's Congress. How will that affect the timing? Does that essentially put things off until at least that's over, which I think is the, the 15th of the month? Um, I don't think it puts everything off. It certainly puts off when the two presidents could meet, because uh, President Xi will be required to be in Beijing during it, and it lasts about uh, 10 to 15 days. But it shouldn't put off the work of the working-level negotiators. I anticipate that they'll probably be talking to each other, even if not physically in the same location, but by digital video conference or conference calls. They can work out the remainder of the deals and then tee it up for the two presidents to meet potentially at the end of March. Today is that it was supposed to be the deadline for more tariffs, which of course got extended uh, by the president. It's also the day that, China, that Canada has to decide whether it's going to extradite, or at least begin the proceedings to extradite, the CFO of Huawei to the United States has faced criminal charges here. When it was first announced, it was thought that could really complicate these negotiations over trade. Have it? Has it? Uh, we understand that the Chinese have raised this issue as well as the case against Fujian Jianhua in the negotiations. From a business community perspective, law enforcement activities and, and actions need to be totally separate from trade negotiations, uh, both in that th there are criminal indictments against these companies, and having those issues mixed up as something that you can negotiate away uh, seems very problematic. And certainly in the sense of the U.S. legal system, but also in terms of the implications that that could happen to foreign companies in China as well. In, in talking to U.S. companies doing business in China, is there any kind of consensus of what they really need out of this deal? I mean, or is it different company to company? Is it more purchases? Is it tech transfer limitations? Is it IPO? Is it reform of subsidies? Or does it just vary across the map? So there definitely are issues that every company has that's unique to their industry. So what, what agriculture needs has to do with both uh, more sales, but also the tariffs that are on their products, as well as market access issues. In financial services, it's largely market access, but then it's going to get into the regulatory approvals issues. All of those things, however, get to generally how foreign companies are treated in the market. That's what uh, USTR began its investigation of in 2017, and that's what we believe the negotiations are focused on. And finally, Aaron, from your talking to U.S. companies once again, are they as concerned about currency manipulation as the president and some of his aides seem to be? Our companies have never viewed this as the top priority issue uh, in the U.S.-China relationship. <clears throat> and certainly what we know right now that the Chinese government is doing is intervening to prevent it from depreciating against the dollar rather than preventing it from appreciating against the dollar. Um, if they have an agreement on this, I, I think that's fine, but it's, it's never been a priority.